Hello, I'm Jeff Johnson from Geothermal University. Today we're going to learn about one of the most important diagnostic tools that we have. Heat of extraction and heat of rejection requires minimum tools to make sure that the unit is operating within manufacturer's specifications. The calculations that we are about to show will confirm that all water side and refrigerant side components are working correctly. This is also a great calculation to perform if the homeowner is claiming that their utility bills are too high. Now let's get started. This process will help attack diagnose refrigerant and water circuits in heating and cooling modes. All units should have PT ports or PETS plugs installed for routine service and startup testing. In addition, these ports should be installed on both the source and the load side if it is a hydronic unit. It is important when taking temperature or pressure readings to have a good quality thermometer and pressure gauge. Use the same gauge for both measurements. A pocket dial thermometer will not work properly. For all heat of extraction and rejection calculations, the superheater must be disabled or turned off. On a non-pressurized system, a flow meter must be used since the pressure gauges do not measure negative pressures. We read the flow meter by measuring the gallons per minute at the top of the float. These measurements will be compared to the published manufacturer's specs. The calculations will confirm proper operation of the unit. We strongly recommend you do not connect refrigerant gauges unless there appears to be a performance problem confirmed by the calculations on this formula. Through completion of this formula and utilizing the structures it provides, most technicians quickly diagnose issues. Through these measurements, we calculate instantaneous BTUs per hour rejected or extracted to and from the ground loop or groundwater. To calculate heat of extraction in heating mode or heat of rejection in cooling mode, we'll need four simple measurements. We'll need the entering water temperature, EWT, the leaving water temperature, LWT, Entering water pressure, EWP, and leaving water pressure, LWP. On a non pressurized flow center, system flow will be measured with a flow meter and will not require pressure measurements. So let's turn to our formula. Now that we have gathered these four measurements we need, we'll perform the calculations. Remember, you can do these calculations on the job site. Through these calculations, we'll now calculate the BTUs per hour either extracted or rejected to and from the loop field and the refrigerant system. Our unit is an XT036, that's a three ton forced air unit. Our brine is antifreeze. Our entering water temperature is 70.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit. Our leaving water temperature that we measured is 88.8 .8 degrees Fahrenheit. We measured an entering water pressure of 17.5 psi. Our leaving water pressure is 15.7 psi. What mode is the unit running in? We're throwing heat into the solution so we know we're in the cooling mode. What is the brine factor? Well, we have an antifreeze solution, so our brine factor is 485. What is the delta PSI? If we go to our entering water pressure of 17.5 and we subtract our leaving water pressure of 15.7, that gives us a pressure differential of 1.8. If we go to our specifications, that will show us that our gallons per minute is seven gallons per minute. What is the delta T? Well, if we take our entering water temperature of 70.7 .7 and subtract our leaving water temperature of 88.8, .8, that gives us a difference, a delta T, of 18.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The EDIM specifications show us that we should be at 47,800 BTUs should be rejected into the loop field every hour. Our heat of extraction, heat of rejection formula Temperature differential times gallons per minute times brine or fluid factor. The formula filled in would be our temperature differential, which is 18.1, times our gallons per minute, which is 7 gallons per minute, times our brine or fluid factor, which is 485. 
If we multiply 18.1 times 7 times 485, we come up with the measured heat of extraction, or heat of rejection in this case, of 61,449 BTUs per hour. Now what we need to know is if we're within 10% of the EDIM specifications of 47,800. We actually exceed the specifications in this instance. Yes, the unit is operating properly. The unit is XTO48. The brine is H2O. Our entering water temperature that we measured is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Our leaving water temperature that we measured is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Our entering water pressure is 32 PSI. Our leaving water pressure is 30 PSI. What mode is the unit running in? Heat. What is the brine factor? 500. What is the delta PSI? 2 PSI. What is the gallons per minute? According to our EDIM or our specifications, it's 7 gallons per minute. What is the delta T? 5 degrees Fahrenheit. EDIM specifications state that the BTUs per hour heat of extraction should be 36,800 BTUs per hour. Measured heat of extraction, heat of rejection, the amount that we actually measured is 17,500. Is the unit operating properly? No, this unit is not operating properly. Thanks for joining us today at Geothermal University.